turn to the book of Luke, chapter 5. I ask you to turn there, and if you're able to stand for the reading of God's word, Luke chapter 5, we'll be reading verses 1 through 11. So it was as the multitude pressed about him, that is Jesus, to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of God endures forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have been looking at people who encounter God. And this evening we have that same theme and we think of Peter as he encounters God in Jesus Christ. We think of many people who can encounter God and in their ignorance, willful and stubborn as it is, they do not see God. We think all creation that declares the glory of God, that declares his handiwork and reflects his greatness, his power, his majesty, his creativity, and yet people look at it and attribute it all to blind chance. Peter has encountered Jesus before. Jesus, we first encounter as Peter's master, one he follows, one he listens to. But we see through this encounter that Simon is challenged, that his perception is changed, and we encounter Jesus then as Peter's Lord. And as we look at that, we want to think about ourselves We who are familiar with Jesus and his stories, who know his history, who have read the Gospels, that we want to ask, what is Jesus to us? A master, a teacher, or a Lord, divine, worthy of all adoration? We see how Peter responds to the revelation of Jesus' divine holiness. This is what he is challenged with. But first we see that Peter sees Jesus as his master. Peter has had previous encounters with Jesus. There is the record in the book of John that we have looked at where Peter is one of those who is brought to Jesus, who would acknowledge that Jesus is someone unique, sent from God. 
and how Peter has witnessed some of the signs, the wonders that Jesus has done. In Luke chapter 4, we see that Peter's mother-in-law was healed from sickness when he went with Peter to his house, and that there were crowds of people who came and were healed, and demons were driven out, and, and Peter acknowledges that here is a great and powerful prophet sent by God. He is a prophet who speaks the word of God. His teaching is captivating because it is spoken with authority, with power, with clarity. It touches the heart. And he is a great prophet who acts with the power of God. Some of the prophets in the Old Testament astounded the people through the exercise of the power of God. And here was Jesus. No sickness, no illness, no demon could withstand the authoritative word of Jesus. We see that. In the previous chapter, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought to them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And this is what Peter observed. This is what Peter acknowledged, that Jesus was worthy of an obedience. Because think of the situation now that is set forth. Peter and those with him have been out all night fishing. And it's not easy work. Throwing out the net, gathering it in, hoping to catch fish. And they had toiled and they had tried and there was nothing. And they probably said, well, should we go in? Well, let's try a little longer. And and they were weary. And they come in and And you know what it's like when you've worked hard and you've got nothing to show for it? (laughs) There's an extra sense of weariness. And they're sitting there washing their nets, cleaning them out, making sure they're in good repair. And as Jesus comes, there's a crowd around him. And they all seek to to be near him, to touch him. And And Jesus knows that if he's going to teach them, there needs to be some distance. He gets in the boat, and he says to Peter, put out a little ways so that he can speak to the crowd. And notice Peter's response. He he obeys. He doesn't say, you know, I've had a rough night, and I've got nothing for it. I'm ready for bed. I'm, I'm going to go get some sleep. He acknowledges that Jesus is worthy of obedience. He he puts his own needs aside because of his respect for Jesus. And he takes the boat out just a little ways, and Jesus sits down and he teaches the crowd. He speaks to them. He instructs them. And here we see that, that Peter certainly acknowledges here is a prophet. Here is a man sent by God who is worthy to be obeyed, and, and he sets that aside and he, he listens. But then Jesus gives him another instruction. He says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, can you imagine what Peter is thinking? <laughs> Peter's a fisherman by trade. Peter has been out all night. There's no fish out there. He has been trying. He knows what the waters are like. He knows the conditions, and this is not the time you go out to fish. And this is what Jesus says to him. And he is thinking to himself, this would be such a waste of time. You, you can almost imagine him, him, him almost on the verge of saying, what? And yet notice his response. He says, Master, 
We have toiled all night and caught nothing. He doesn't expect anything different. Now, nevertheless, he says, at your word, I will let down the net. You see, here was Peter, willing to be obedient acknowledging that Jesus was master. Jesus wasn't a fisherman. He didn't know more than Peter did about fishing. At least Peter didn't think so. And, and yet, he will acknowledge him as master. And therefore, he obeys him. But we see how the perception of Jesus is challenged. Peter obeys, and he lets down the net, and he looks down, and they begin to gather it in, and he looks, and it's like he can hardly believe his eyes. They're pulling on this net, and, and what is wrong with this? It is so heavy. It is so difficult. And they labor, and they bring it, and they begin to see it is full of fish. And here, a little piece of string snaps, and there another one. This net is as full as it could possibly be. And they, they look at it and they go, we need some help. And they signal their, their, their partners on land. They're waving to them. They signal, you need to come. And they come out. And here's this catch of fish, and they, they start putting them in the boat. And they fill one up. And they fill the other one up. And, and there are so many that the boats are almost beginning to sink. The, the waves would lap a little bit over the edges because there are so many fish. And Peter is challenged in his understanding of who Jesus is. What does Peter see when he sees this catch? Does he see just a lot of fish? <laughs> Does he see a lot of dollar signs? No. Peter sees that Jesus is more than he has thought, more than he has perceived. We sometimes read and, and might be a little confused. In verse 8, we see Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And you think, wait a minute, what's the connection between all these fish and Peter's acknowledgement of his sin? Well, think of Peter's assessment of Jesus. He's basically said, Look, we finished fished all night. I don't have any hope that we're going to catch anything, but because you said it, I'll listen to your word because you are the master, I'm the disciple. But you see the unbelief in that? It was not a ready, willing obedience saying, Lord, I submit to you cheerfully. And as Jesus shows a divine power Peter has never had a catch like this. This was no accident. This was not just being in the right time in the right place. This was the work of God, giving the fullness of blessing. And Peter had doubted. He had barely obeyed Jesus. And he sees that, that doubt, that stubbornness in his own heart. As he looks at that catch, and he looks at Jesus, and Jesus, who, who knew this, he told him, what did he say? Let down your nets and maybe we'll get something. No, let you down your nets for a catch. Jesus had no doubt. He was clear, this is what will happen. And, and Peter had doubted. And suddenly his heart is exposed. He saw his own unworthiness before this great prophet. Yes, but more 
than a prophet. One who spoke with the authority of God. This is what Peter understood. Now, the question might come up, did Peter understand that Jesus was the Son of God at this point? I would be hesitant to say that. Peter will later make that declaration. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But here Peter is confronted with the fact that Jesus is no mere prophet, not merely one who is to be master. And here you see the change in language. For in verse, um, in verse 5, Peter says, Master, we have toiled all night. But in verse 8, where Peter makes his confession, he says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Notice the chain from Master to Lord. And Peter acknowledges his sin that he recognized he is in the presence of one who is calm and serene in the midst of all this bustling as a fish are brought in. He is not surprised. He is directed. And Peter thinks, how can I be in the presence of one who has such power, such authority, when I have doubted, when I have shown my stubbornness of heart, depart from me. He would see his relationship to Jesus differently. Jesus was worthy, but he was unworthy. And this is what caused him to make that confession. And we need to ask that same question. Have each of you, have each of us come to that same point where we don't simply know about Jesus? Where we don't simply say, he was a great man. I can learn so much, I need to follow him. Have we come to the place where we say with Peter, I am unworthy to be in your very presence. You are Lord, and I am a sinful man. It is at that point that there is the hope for Peter, for you, for me, as we come to that point, and we don't come and saying, ah, thanks for a little help, great tip fishing. That's not what Peter thinks or says. Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He is astounded. Never has he seen such a catch of fish. And those with him as well are astounded. And they think, who is this man? <coughs> the disciples will think that again. When Jesus calms the storm. And they will ask again, who is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Who is that authority but God himself? And so Jesus is revealing himself with an authority, with a power that belongs to the divine. But he does not do so and castigate Peter for doubting him, for acting so reluctantly. No, there is a new understanding on the part of Peter. He acknowledges Jesus as Lord. He acknowledges his own relationship as one who is a sinner. And Jesus is not. But then there is a new relationship initiated by Jesus. Notice Jesus' response. Do not be afraid. Think of the Old Testament. How many times did God not say that? 
to those whom he called. Do not be afraid. The circumstances may seem overwhelming. The task may seem monumental. And God says, do not be afraid. Think of Joshua. Tasks to conquer Canaan with all of its fortified cities, with all of its giants. And what does God say? Fear not, be not afraid. And so Peter, who looks at himself and sees his sin and thinks, how in the world can I associate with this holy prophet this man, this one who exercises the power of God. Jesus says, do not be afraid. He has not come to judge, but to save. And he says, there's going to be a new relationship. From now on, you will catch men. You see, Jesus says, you are going to be my disciple." You are going to follow me. You are going to become a fisher of men and not of the fish of the sea. He was calling him to participate in a glorious work, the kingdom work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter responds, with gratitude, with wholehearted obedience. Notice what he does. When they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all. They left it all and followed him, followed Jesus. They didn't say, well, we better get this fish cleaned up into market. They didn't say, we've got to relax and enjoy this great catch. They left it all. They recognized the task that Jesus called them to was far greater. And they forsook it and followed him. Why? Because they acknowledged Jesus in his divine holiness, his power. And therefore they could forsake all. And you think how we are called to acknowledge Jesus as God, to have that encounter that we would be ready to forsake all. And if the world, the entire world says, what fools you are, we look and we smile and we say, I will follow him. Peter, James, John, they left it all because they had a greater calling. Now we recognize not everyone will exhibit it exactly the same way. Jesus is no longer on the earth. He doesn't call us to forsake everything. But in one sense, we do forsake everything when we trust in Jesus alone. That We don't say, well, I need to be established. I need to be fit. I need to have my little nest egg before I can seek to do anything for Jesus because it might cost. And we say, no, God provides. And I need to be faithful. I'm not called to be foolish. But we are called to follow Jesus. To say, here is my riches. Here is my Savior. He is the one. He is able to provide all that I need. You think of Peter. Probably his brother Andrew was with him. James and John. They left all. Were they abandoning their fame? Were they leaving them destitute? You think of Jesus saying, they will be provided for. If he can provide this catch of fish, can he not provide all that we need? And therefore we follow him and say, Lord, I entrust myself to you. For you have said, do not fear. You have said, you must be fishers of men. 
Jesus knew that the task for which he had come down. He was called by the Father, sent by the Father to proclaim the good news, the forgiveness of sins in him, to draw man to himself, and we have that commission as well. We see it here, particularly to the disciples, but we see it for the church, the end of the book of Matthew, that we are to go out to the uttermost ends of the earth to declare the gospel, to call people to believe in Jesus Christ and to be disciples of him. And how can we do that if we not, are not first ourselves disciples? Having encountered God in Jesus Christ. Seeing that he is God incarnate. That he is in the very form. Having the fullness of God. And then we say, yes, I will leave all to follow him. And I too will be a fisher of men. And there were others we see in the New Testament who received that call. We think of Paul, perhaps the, the greatest example of that, who excelled in his learning, in his knowledge, in, in the future that was bright for him. And he encountered God in Jesus. As Jesus said to him, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And Paul left all to follow Jesus. He left that great opportunity that he had. And he used his great knowledge and learning to preach Jesus Christ. That earned him what? Beatings and stripes and rods, and shipwrecks, and stoning. But he knew Jesus. He forsook all and said, this momentary light affliction cannot be compared to the eternal weight of glory. And Peter began to see that. I don't think that he had the full picture, but he understood enough that he was in the presence of, Someone who was greater than a man. Who shone with divine radiance. That exposed his sin. And yet said, do not fear. But follow me. This is our Savior. Who calls you and me. And yes, he exposes our sin. But he says, do not fear. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. May we love that Savior. And follow him, forsaking all. To live for him. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, it is so easy in our world to think that our meaning, our purpose is found in our position, in our possessions. Lord, we think of Peter, his brother Andrew, of James and John, who left all to follow Jesus. Lord, may we leave behind all those things in which we might trust, to trust in you alone, but to find that you are great and glorious, worthy of all praise because you are Lord. Father, we think of how you revealed yourself more and more fully to the disciples and how we have that fullness of the record that we may know that in Jesus the fullness of deity dwelt. O Lord, may we worship you. May we long for you. And may we follow you in all obedience, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.